This is What Do You Bring to the Table, a nonprofit project made by youth for youth that aims to explore the many, many career paths available within our Canadian food systems. By interviewing industry leaders across the country, we get a first hand look at the various existing and emerging agri food career opportunities with a particular focus on equity and sustainability. We want to thank the Gailey Foundation for their generosity in supporting this project, as well as the Catherine and Maxwell Megan Foundation and the Peterborough K.M. Hunter Charitable Foundation. Please visit our website youthinfoodsystems.ca and sign up for our free monthly e-newsletter to stay involved. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Links to those are on our website. If you like what we're doing, please drop a like, review, or comment. Or, if you have the means to, contribute with a monetary donation through our website. Thanks for listening! This is episode 7, Mizan and Chakudi. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Youth and Food Systems interview series. My name is Vitam and today I have with me here Chukudi Amadi, who is the Agricultural Lab Coordinator at the University of Saskatchewan. Hi Chukudi, how are you doing today? I am very well, thank you, Nesim. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Would it be possible for you to give a introduction? Well, I am, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Chukudi Amadi. Uh, I am the laboratory coordinator in the Department of Soil Science at the University of Saskatchewan. So, and what I do is to um, bring some practice into, into some of the theory that is taught in class to help students learn by doing. And uh, that has been a, a very great experience for me doing it since uh, 2016. Um, and it brings a lot of, uh, a lot of increase in students learning experience and that's why I love doing it and that's why I keep doing it today so thank you uh, for that um let, let's get to the question okay. so how does your job work well um so there are all of these theories in agriculture and things that we'd like to pass on and teach students and when students are in class it's very difficult sometimes to imagine those things or management practices or the best management practices we teach them. Sometimes it's hard to figure out how it works. But in the laboratory, we can create experiments and assignments and activities and exercises that help to buttress some of those theories to help students understand um, how those how those lessons and theories in agriculture work and how we can improve today's agriculture. And so that's what we do in the lab. Uh, we create stations and allow students to practice, to again, learn by doing, is the essence of, uh, of laboratory work at the University of Saskatchewan. So what is your favorite part about your job? My favorite part um, is uh, I, 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 it, I could never teach uh, without illustrations. So I really love the idea that it's a package deal. You know, you, you teach students the theory and then you have all these other ways of helping them to practice and do, um, do the activities themselves. So that's, that's my favorite part of the job. But um, aside that, I like to um, see that students are actually getting the value for their tuition. You know, but that that when they sign off of the university, when they are done, they can be um, job ready. They can be employment ready because they've done the things with their hands and it's it's easier for them to fit in the job industry. So that in itself gives me satisfaction that we are training future agriculturists that are able to to handle today's challenges. Right. And uh, and. Of course, apart from students' experience, there, there are those that naturally they want to do things for them to even learn it, to understand it. So giving them that opportunity to, to learn by doing um, is something that I really love about the job that I do. Hey, um, what part of your job do you find easy and uh, what parts do you find harder challenging? I think it's easy to it's naturally i love to teach right and and i love to see students 
that light bulb turned on in, on their um, in their heads to say, oh, I, I so finally I've just grasped this, and so there is a, a good feeling about that, and that's something I love, really. That the easier part is that um, you can set up stations and help students to to do do the things that they need to do. I think the difficult part um, is that things change. So I have to keep up with industry. So as, as things update in the industry, because we are preparing students to go be, um, to go fit in the industries, we want to make sure that we keep an eye on the industries as they evolve so that we bring that evolution to the classroom so that students can, again, be able to, to fit. Um, the other challenge is coming up with ideas of how to illustrate things in a really good way that students can understand exactly what the theories are talking about. So um, something that goes along with that would be resources. So be it money or, or the apparatus just to set up uh, is, um, station or set up an experiment or an activity that allows students to understand a given concept better. So that's, uh, those are what I see as the challenges. But uh, thankfully, uh, these are challenges that can be surmounted. And, and so with funding from the university and the unit, the department unit, we're able to, to provide these things. And then uh, when it comes to the industry, I always go make regular visits to the industries to make sure that uh, when they are updating, we are also updating. And so far, I, I just need to throw this one in, but so far, most of the graduates from agriculture and soil science and the renewable resource management in environment sciences, the graduates in Saskatchewan and across, and across Canada, they have found jobs in very great companies and, and, uh, and they are doing well because of that, um, that uh, uh, experiential learning component, which is in the laboratory that, that uh, they are able to do. Okay. Did you originally set out for this kind of job? What inspired you? I didn't originally um, set up to, to be a teacher. Um, I really wanted to be a researcher. I, I did my PhD at the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, prior to that, it was at the U, UK in Wales, where I did more phosphorus study, looking at how phosphorus helps plants, um, plants that cannot access them. So plant access to phosphorus was my research, and I really loved it. Um, but when I came to the University of Saskatchewan and I took some courses, I had uh, one, one old professor, um, despite his age, he was so passionate about teaching that it was so contagious. I, he, you can tell that he really loved what he did. And um, the apex is that he, he knew his subject, but he actually knew how to transmit the knowledge he knows to students. And that was very inspiring to me. And I thought I could be the next generation of, a great, of great teachers and great professors. And so that's what inspired me to come into teaching. I've loved it so far. And so far, the, the sort of uh, response I get back from students, isn't it ironic, is that, um, that I am passionate about what I teach. And that's just a, a, a great testament that uh, that professor, Jeff, has actually impacted, um, inspired me a lot into what I do. OK. What would a day be like for someone in your job? OK. so. In order to make all the components work, um, there needs to be the idea. So I need to do some brainstorming, figure out how to present um, a, a given activity. But then beyond that, we'll be staying in the lab and setting up different stations where students can can work. So you know that can take anywhere between one or two hours to set them up, depending on the number of students that. Uh, um, that you, you are teaching um, for that particular afternoon. Um, and, then, and then you have, there is a little bit of thinking that go into that. You have to think about how many students per station and how many stations overall. So, and then there is some marking with every teaching, there is some grading and marking that go with it. And then 
both formal and uh, an informal assessment that uh, students need to get. So um, that's what a day uh, in, in the life of uh, a lab coordinator looks like. But what I really enjoy the most is interaction with the students, getting to know them more, where they come from, what, uh, what kinds of um, activities they want to do when they leave the university. So those that want to go back to be growers or farmers, or um, those that uh, just uh, want to be consultants in different fields. So it's, that's, uh, that's the part that I love the most to basically interact with the students and chat with them. Because when you know them more, you can then make the learning and teaching and learning becomes more student focused rather than instructor focused. So, and that usually the, the learning experience becomes even better and better because you know that you are gearing, you are basically focusing the teaching to what the students actually need. Okay, um, what advice would you give to someone going into your field? Take every teaching opportunity that comes your way seriously, whether it is the one that you have to volunteer to teach or the one that you are paid to teach. Um, take them seriously. And uh, I didn't mention that I have a lot of teaching assistants that do help me, but it is from that um, that you can graduate into this kind of uh, work. You can't, it's difficult for you to get a teaching job uh, without having teaching experience. So my advice is wherever um, you've, you've, you get an opportunity to teach, take it seriously, um, teach and learn from it and improve as you go on to do more teaching. And, uh, and uh, by the time you become a lab coordinator, a professor or, or a teacher in any form, you, you already have the basics, the experience that you need to, to step into those positions. So I, I saw that your interests are primarily related to monitoring greenhouse gas emissions and agroecosystems. How does that work? Okay, well, that was uh, part of the research I did uh, here in Saskatchewan, but uh, uh, we know that um, now we, we have a lot of people here on Earth. So we, we've got um, eight, billion people now and so that's more mouths to feed and but at the same time when we grow crops there are all these and we add fertilizers there are some greenhouse gases which also affect our environment that are associated with growing crops or raising animals or even using tractors and so the challenge for every farmer and grower is to grow enough crops to to uh, satisfy all the even growing mouths, you know, bigger population of the earth. So we have to grow enough food to satisfy them, but at the same time reduce our environmental footprint. And so that was solely my research. I went out in the field to measure um, greenhouse gas emissions that are associated with, with growing crops, um, but also how can we incorporate trees to reduce the, uh, the footprint of uh, um, from from growing crops, the carbon footprint, and so part of that involved putting chambers in the field just to monitor how much gases are coming off from the soils. So I did uh, I, I chose three different sites and I looked at uh, at the gases CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide oxide that was coming off from the field was an interesting exercise and uh, lots of sampling, lots of data. But in the end, we were able to find out that a, a lot of gases can come up um, from the crop fields just because of the fertilizers and additives and how much water is in there, how much nitrogen fertilizer we put there. And there are recommendations that have come out from that study to say, be mindful um, of how much of these things you put in, put enough um, that we grow the crops, but not too much more, not more. And uh, there are other recommendations in terms of carbon, how much we store in the soil versus how much goes into the atmosphere. So results from this research, um, looking at greenhouse gas emissions from crop fields and shelter belts have been published. And anybody that wants to, is interested in it, um, can go out and Google shelter belts 
and uh, crop fields and greenhouse gases, and they will see the result, the results from these studies. They are all online now, and people can see them. But it was an interesting study. I want to mention here that most times people um, go into agriculture thinking that they will do just soil um, work or plant work or something else. But there is a, a huge environmental aspect in agriculture now that is coming up. And we need the upcoming generation to pick this up to make sure that as we produce food, food for you know the population that is coming up, we are also being mindful of our environment. Um, to make sure that we don't wreck our soil and the earth in the process of producing food. Hmm, interesting. Uh, what do you uh, and the organization hope to achieve in the future? Um, what would the well, well, I think as a university, um, we really want to achieve the goal of of graduating, making sure that our graduates are. Uh, are employment ready and so that's the whole point of creating the laboratories and the teaching labs because we want the students to have enough experience that by the time they leave the graduate they are able to step into that job um, and not be so overwhelmed because of a new system um, and for me as an individual I think I want to create more need my goal is to create in students um, the, the willingness to, to learn more, to seek more information. And, uh, and that's by creating enough curiosity um, through the activities we do in the lab that the students can go out and seek out for, for more knowledge. So um, I, I think between, between the idea that we want students to be professionally ready and also to be able to learn by doing, but also be curious to learn more. We want students that are uh, competent in the society, people that can take on the new challenges in agriculture and environment and be able to surmount them. And we're looking up to the young people that are coming in to take on this challenge after us, so. Hey, uh, is there anything you wish you would have known before getting I think that what I would have, what I would say is that it's just the advice that I give to anybody who wants to um, be a teacher like me or be a professor like me. Um, you, you need to take every teaching opportunity you see along your way. So that's what I, I wished I knew um, earlier on is that um, every time I see a teaching opportunity, whether it, whether it is with kids, those in high school or those in, you know, in grade school, make sure to take it seriously and, uh, and learn from it and improve from it. That's something that I would tell anybody who wants to become a teacher down the road. Okay, so that looks about it. Um, I would like to thank you for being here and participating in this interview. Thank you very much, Mason, for, for making time for this. I think, uh, I hope that uh, enough young people will do it and have more interest in, in the field of agriculture and also in be interested in teaching. We hope you enjoyed this episode of What Do You Bring to the Table, a project of Seeds of Diversity's Youth and Food Systems program. Thanks again to the Gailey Foundation, the Catherine and Maxwell Megan Foundation, and the Peterborough K.M. Hunter Charitable Foundation. And of course, thanks to you for listening. See you again soon.